What up, everybody? Life with Aaron with you and our travels today take us to Louisville, Kentucky, and more specifically to the Zachary Taylor Presidential Cemetery. So today, folks, we're going to be discussing the life and death of the 12th president of the United States, Zachary Taylor. Born in Virginia in 1784, Zachary Taylor was born into a very prominent family. In fact, Zachary Taylor's famous family consists of James Madison, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and even Robert E. Lee. Raised on a farm and described by some as a poor student, Zachary would join the military at 23 and quickly rise through the ranks. And three years later, he would marry Margaret Smith and they would have six children. Zachary Taylor served 40 years in the military, achieving the rank of Major General. His fame was so much that he could be compared to Andrew Jackson or even George Washington. A hero of the Mexican-American War, a person who had never served in political office, Zachary Taylor would still be named our 12th President of the United States as a member of the Whig Party. A lifetime moderate, one of the things Zachary Taylor hated was divisive politics and had one goal in mind when entering the presidency national unity and although raised on a plantation and a slaveholder at the time of his presidency zachary taylor did not want the institution to continue and wanted new states coming into the union to be slave free southern states angered by this were quick to threaten secession and zachary taylor wasted no time in saying he would use the full might of the military to keep such a thing from happening infamously zachary taylor would be the last president to hold slaves while in office and he would be the last Whig to ever win a presidential election. Shockingly, in 1850, just 16 months into his presidency, Zachary Taylor would die after complaining of stomach pains after eating cherries. It was the third shortest presidential term in history. So hold up a second. How did President Taylor die? Was it the cherries? Was it heat stroke, as been said by some? Actually, it was Plano gastroenteritis. So that's not quite the complete story. So there had been a prevailing rumor that Zachary Taylor had been murdered. Had been murdered with arsenic. That had become such a strong rumor and believed by so many that his body would actually many years later be exhumed, testing would be done, and the verdict would be not poisoned. Not poisoned at all less arsenic than some of us carry around in our systems today. More than likely, it's actually a combination of things. Gastroenteritis, flu. The medical field was not strong at this time, and due to poor medical care, that could have done in President Taylor as well. But he was not murdered. And in the end, after researchers from Oak Ridge, Tennessee Laboratories and from the University of Kentucky had concluded there was no foul play in the death of President Taylor. It can be said that for 1850 standards, 65 was an incredibly long life. Even today, we would consider that a life well lived. And there's not too many more lives that are better lived than that of President Taylor. 40-year military career, ascending to the office of the president, a great life lived. And now that brings us to our location in Louisville, Kentucky, the Zachary Taylor National Cemetery. This cemetery is unique in that it not only has servicemen, but also their spouses were able to be buried here. So different from Arlington, for example. As his vice president, uh, Millard Fillmore would succeed President Taylor as the new president of the United States following his death. And the eulogy was given by none other than our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. This is a, a very serene place. Not a lot of people here really enjoy just walking around the grounds. A lot of what you see here happened in the 1930s. A lot of the uh, revitalization of this cemetery and some of the other older ones in our country. There was a nationalism sweeping the country at this time as the American public was getting their pride back after coming through the Great Depression. Many people who had been jobless were being put back to work on public works projects. And uh, a lot of really what we see today is thanks to those times. Here as we get towards the end of the cemetery on the right, you can see the crypt that has uh, Zachary Taylor in it and the statue to him. Also in the upper right hand corner, we see a lot of the Taylor family. 
Now we're going to make our way over to the monument to President Zachary Taylor, old rough and ready, and to the crypt. This is actually not the original home of the body of President Taylor. I'll actually show you that in just a second. And here is the original crypt and placard to President Taylor right across from the current crypt. A lot of flowers, greenery now growing on the original. Kind of pretty. The crypt is some of the family of President Taylor, and I thought this one was interesting because uh, Colonel Richard Taylor was buried with his consort, which we would say was his companion or not his wife. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for liking, subscribing, for viewing. And I hope you know a little bit more about President Taylor.